Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Sea of Thieves News. Coming up, Joni discusses the launch of Season 1 and some new updates coming to the game. I'll be taking you through what's still to come in Sea of Thieves' first season. And Octagon Ron is here to explain the explosive events of Armageddon. We've got lots of great things coming in this episode, so let's dive straight in. So hey everyone, good to be back chatting to you. Feels like it's been a while. Recently we have obviously launched Seasons, which has been an amazing way to kick off the year. I'm really proud of the team and of how they've worked together to deliver what is a really complex kind of update uh, behind the scenes, kind of under the hood. Uh, but it's landed really well. Uh, it's functioned kind of broadly as we expected, and we've seen really good sentiment from from you all players, which is amazing. Uh, and also, it's led to, to to us being just in a really great position as we kind of kick off uh, 2021. So January, which was we you know we launched at the end of January, but but January has been our biggest month yet in terms of mail. So monthly active users, the most people we've had playing in a single calendar month, which is incredible, seeing as you know we've been out nearly three years now. Uh, and we also saw kind of our highest CCU, which is concurrent users, so kind of people playing uh, at the same time, uh, since around the launch period in, in March 2018, which was kind of when we hit our, our, our original peak. But, but so since then, this has kind of been our, uh, our highest time, which again is incredible. And to be nearly three years into the journey for Sea of Thieves and to, to be in that position is just incredible. So thanks to everyone for, like who's been here since the start or who's joined us more recently. Um, just, just an amazing kind of moment in time for us. And, and as we head into this year, I've said it before and I'll, I'll continue to say it, but I definitely think this year is going to be our biggest one yet. Um, and, and Seasons is really just the kind of start of that, but there's a lot more to come uh, through the year. So now that we're kind of heading into the rhythm of, of how a season is going to kind of play out over a period of around three months, we have our first quality of life focus update that's coming on February the 18th. Seasons is a big shift in terms of how we're going to be delivering the game to, to players. You know, very much getting into this every few months, delivering a new season, delivering kind of new features, new content, just kind of new value alongside that. And then in between, it's all going to be about kind of playing through the season. It's going to be about live events. We're going to be really kind of ramping up what we can do with, with live events as we go through the year. As a team, it means we're kind of in this transitionary period where we've got a couple of parts of our team. So kind of like two thirds of the team who are working behind the the scenes uh, on future kind of content for seasons and then one of the other teams that's looking at um, as we head into season two they're kind of focusing on that but then if you look at three you look at four that's kind of where um, the other parts of our team are focusing now and very much we are all in uh, as, as a kind of team as a studio on, uh, on Sea of Thieves and, and actually the team size now is, is the biggest it's ever been we've continued to grow this as we've continued to kind of grow our audience with Sea of Thieves which is a great place to be in you know both internally at Rare but also as we look to some of the co-development partnerships that we've been forming kind of over the last few years with, with other um, game studios that, that continues we've been continuing to form kind of new partnerships because uh, you know we just want to kind of make Sea of Thieves as big as it can be and, and, and kind of continue to grow that audience. And so that means you know, growing, growing that team that comes along with it, which is super exciting. And one other thing that's kind of on my mind at the moment as well is it definitely feels like over the last year as we've shifted away from doing the weekly updates, we kind of transitioned to Sea of Thieves news, but we've been a bit sporadic with, with when we've been doing those. The, how we kind of communicate to, how we connect, how we talk about some of the uh, the kind of hot topics in the community that we, we definitely want to do more in, in, in that front. So we've been having some conversations internally at the studio, not quite ready to share exactly how we're planning to go tackle that, but uh, we're, we're really kind of looking to how do we go kind of build that connection again? How do we really make sure that we're talking about the top topics that are, that are really important to you, our players? So yeah, we've got some thoughts on that. We'll, be, we'll have more to share soon, um, but, but really kind of keen to start getting in a bit more into the details kind of talking about some of those things and what our plans are to kind of address as we uh, as we move forward through the year. Moving on to the February 18th update, I just want to talk about a few of the uh, kind of quality of life features that are coming with that. So first of all, there's an accessibility feature for audio where you can now switch the audio so you can hear it in mono as opposed to stereo, which can help people who are maybe hard of hearing in one ear. So that's just another of our kind of ongoing accessibility improvements that, that we'll continue to target as we, as we move forward. 
Uh, and also for anyone that's playing on Steam now, we've actually made it so that we kind of connect better with the, the kind of Steam framework. And ultimately now that means you can uh, kind of access your Steam friends list and invite them to Sea of Thieves, or you can go and join people who are playing Sea of Thieves via Steam friends list. So just a real kind of quality of life improvement for people that are playing on Steam. Really proud, happy, happy to kind of deliver that to people because I know that's important to, to everyone that's playing on that platform. So for those of you that have been with us for a while, you'll have known that we have done charity sales in the past where we bring a set of ship sales to the Pirate Emporium uh, and all proceeds from those goes to a partner charity that we're working with. So we're really proud to announce that the newest one of those is a set of sales called Sales of Hope that are going to be for Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital, which is a, you know, a charity that is a close to a lot of people's hearts over here in the UK and one we're really proud to partner with. Uh, and so from the 18th, any sales of those specific uh, sales of hope will, will go to, to the charity um, Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital. Like really cool. So, you know, if you if you're able to contribute, then then please do. It's it's much appreciated. So, just a couple of things to, to also call out as well that have kind of happened recently. In case you missed them. So, so firstly, uh, in the last update that when we when we released seasons, we also released a performance mode for the Xbox Series X. So, anyone that's out there that's lucky enough to have um, one of those new consoles, and if you're also lucky enough to have a TV that supports 120 hertz, which I don't, boo. Um, then there will be a setting in there for you to go and change if you want to to kind to switch to 1080p but 120 hertz just to kind of feel that extra responsiveness so really cool kind of bit of work from our engine team if you have a tv that's capable of that and you and you have the series x uh, then go give that a try so one of the other things we've also been kind of listening to and, and and wanted to react to some of the feedback we've seen in the community was around the xbox duke uh, ship set which is what came if you uh, kind of had a series x and you played sea of thieves then you can get access to this ship set uh, and I think originally that was due to end in around May or something in terms of that sort of length of, of how long it would be open for, but we've now extended it through to kind of November, so to the kind of one year anniversary of the of the Series X and, and S being released. So, you know, we know not everybody has been able to get their hands on the console they want and um, just with kind of supply constraints and things, so we, we've extended that through to... Um, to the kind of one year anniversary. So hopefully everybody in that time frame will be able to get their hands on the on the console if they so wish. Um, but yeah, yeah, pleased to be able to kind of react to that feedback and, and we'll continue to monitor it as we, as we kind of head forward as well. Um, uh, but, but feel good about that kind of decision. One thing that's slightly out of shot but behind me, but on the top shelf, uh, is actually our Sea of Thieves Monopoly board, which is a, just an amazing kind of partnership that, that our kind of brand and licensing team have been working on for quite a while now. And one that just blows our mind I think as, as as people that grew up playing Monopoly and and to, to, to partner with such an amazing uh, kind of company and, and brand so so this has been released recently it's on the Rare store and the Rare kind of website and it comes with a little gold macaw that's kind of exclusive to that and eventually it will probably make its way into the Pirate Emporium but if you want to pick up uh, see if the Heaps Monopoly and, and kind of play that with your, with your friends and family um, then it's just it's really cool and we've worked so closely in partnership with the with the team at Monopoly to really kind Kind of make sure that it feels as sea of thieves as possible and that it really kind of you know meets our expectations of what we would have in our minds if we wanted to go and make a, a sea of thieves version of monopoly uh yeah very cool just one final bit of news for us which is that with the 18th build we're also introducing japanese localization to it so you know we've obviously had got a wide range of languages that we support sea of thieves in but we've seen a lot of people um who've been asking for the japanese localization a lot of people kind of coming to the steam page from that part of the world uh and so really kind of happy to bring that and, and to open up Sea of Thieves to an even, even wider audience. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to that launching on the 18th. Uh, but that's it from me. I think John now will be taking over the baton and, and talking about some, some other cool stuff. So, as always, I will see you on the seas. Cheers. As we continue to bring new content as part of Season 1, we're going to be updating the game on February the 18th. And that brings with it a whole host of new items to the Pirate Emporium. This includes the Rogue Tinkerer ship set and player costumes, the Reaper's Heart Cat, and a set of romantic emotes. But there's also an emote for free, the Point and Laugh emote. And remember, the Plunder Pass continues to be available to buy at any point throughout Season 1. This unlocks the ability to earn 11 premium items from the Pirate Emporium. The Hunter's Call Trading Company have declared their very own festival, the Festival of Fishing.
From February the 25th to March the 18th, you'll be able to travel around the Sea of Thieves, honing your fishing skills and hauling in the rewards. In this event, you'll be able to earn the Gold Hoarder, Merchant Alliance, Order of Souls and Frostbite Fishing Rods. For all those pirate legends out there wanting to spend some of that hard-earned gold, the new Dark Adventure equipment, instruments and weapon set are now available to buy from the Pirate Hideout. We wanted to create a special set for our most dedicated players, allowing them to drop an eye-watering amount of gold and flaunt their wealth out on the seas. And finally, Season 1 Twitch Drops continue. From February 19th to February 23rd, you can watch any of the Sea of Thieves partners to earn the Gilded Phoenix Shovel, Spyglass, Pocket Watch and Fishing Rod, as well as a new dance emote. So head on over to seaofthieves.com forward slash twitch dash drops to sign up now. And that's all from me today. Up next, Octagon Ron's going to tell us all about the explosive Armageddon. Armageddon is a way for multiple Sea of Thieves communities to come together and welcome in the new year with a big bang. In late 2018, Shimba, Burger Warrior, and I were joking at a skull fort about how fun it would be to collect a bunch of kegs and set them off. About a month later, in some collaboration, we decided to have our first Armageddon event at Sanctuary Outpost. After three years of trying, it took us approximately 36 hours total. Um, 32 hours to collect kegs and four hours to set them up. Overall, 46 Sea Thieves Pirates came together to make this event successful. There's too many to name in this short time that we have. So I'd like to take this special time to thank Brother for being by my side on the island, Hardware for all the organization, and MerfolksLullaby.com for keeping us up to date on all the weather up to the minute. We wouldn't have had so many safe transportations without you. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest Sea of Thieves news, then like, subscribe, and click that little ship's bell for all those notifications. Cheers.